where we bring to you the word of restoration in the spirit Hallelujah. of faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> howdy. Hallelujah to the land. Howdy, howdy. Doing well, Pastor Paulette? I'm doing wonderful. Just don't understand what the issue is with Facebook. All right, maybe if you speak, they are going to listen to you. I don't understand why they get to delete our videos. I don't get it. And not only a delay of videos, it's uh, issues with broadcasting. It's yeah. Interesting. Well, I well, well. I understand. Glory, 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 glory. Any of your uncles who know how to speak to Facebook, go talk to them. <laughs> 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, 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 how are you? I'm doing well. You're doing well. It's been a great day. Yep. It's been a good day. Retreating upwards. Retreating upwards. It's been, it's it's been, been something, right? It's been good. It's been something. Yeah. It's been something. It's been something. And God is being glorified. We are excited about that. Amen. Uh, people have been asking about, so let me start over here. People have been asking about School of Ministry. Okay. And, um, you know, we're going to have a link in a minute where you can go and register and uh, pay your non-refundable registration. Pay your non-refundable registration. Um, we, you know, school should be starting, I don't know, uh, as the administrator uh, when school is going to be starting. But that's coming up really quickly. That's coming up really quickly. And next year, Catapult, we are going to be graduating another set of students mm -hmm. it is going to be beautiful and god is going to be glorified Amen. you know we have always been talking about how amazing this this current class is you know and um, we are looking forward to them being amazing ministers of the gospel mm -hmm. yeah i remember last weekend when the the, the others were graduating it, it was just beautiful to see how they were just super excited. Like, next year is our turn. Right. It was beautiful. So it is going to be their turn indeed, and it is going to be wonderful. So for those of you who want to know more about the School of Ministry, the, 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 there's going to be a link that's coming up in a few minutes, and um, you should be able to get on there and register and please, just so you remember, registration is not the collecting of information. It is more so, <laughs> you know, um, paying your non-refundable registration fee. And that is when you're considered to have been registered. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, Amen. Mr. Ask you, one of the graduates came from graduation and asked if there was class <laughs> on Monday. You graduated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I believe they're saying that because, you know, there's a consciousness of maintaining the school, the, the, the cell the, groups and bringing them to a certain point. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that they have to keep doing. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the, the beauty about school, right? You <coughs> get to develop a new routine. Mm -hmm. School mm -hmm. helps you to come into the discipline of certain things, and those things are supposed to be maintained in your life moving forward. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those things that you say, okay, I'm done with school, so I'm done with that. You know, so you learned how to evangelize in school of ministry. You can't say, okay, I'm done with school, I'm done with evangelism. I'm done with school, I'm done with teaching people the word. I'm done with school, I'm done with prayer. You know, you, those are disciplines that you maintain in your life. School helped you build those disciplines, helped you build certain relationships, and it behooves you to continue. Right. Yeah, so. So that's, um, that's a huge blessing regarding school. And um, as we get on with today's broadcast, we are going to be praying. And, uh, of course, um, get ourselves ready to move forward. Well, guys, welcome. Welcome to the Kange Household of Faith. Welcome, Minister Barbara. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Minister Danny Ontua. Welcome. Welcome, Minister Daisy. Hi, welcome, Pastor John. Pastor John. Hi, Minister Rose Kalusa. Minister Ethel, God bless you. Good to have you on. Hi, Minister Jalisa. Hey, Jalisa. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Pastor Eunice. Okay, Pastor, Hi, Pastor Evelyn. Evelyn. Praise God, hello, praise God. Hello, hello, George. Minister Ashley, Minister Tineen, 
Minister Michelle, Pastor Ruth. God bless you all and, and, and just welcome. Hi, Minister Barbara. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, Minister Veronica. I hope you enjoyed your birthday. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Pauline. Yes, sir. Our retreating upward has really taken an interesting turn. It right? has. An interesting turn. We've been having prayer times. They have been very intense. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Today was something. I was blessed. I was sitting there going, whoa. Some people were flowing in the prophetic, just releasing prophetic words on people. Like, yeah, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that, that was really good. That was really good. And, and the fact that we have been staying in a place of prayer, just praying in the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. like for an hour. And, and, and so our prayer times have been like that. Today we started at 1. Mm -hmm. And we went from 1 and only closed at 5. five. You know, that was really intense. Five hours, you know, of prayer from one to five. So that was, that was really good. That was really good. And we had some people who, who <laughs> were giving, you know, testimonies of, of, of their experience and, and so on and so forth. And that was, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So Madam was saying it was off, Pastor John says today was off the chain. <laughs> Mr. Nana says it was an awesome day. It was a great day, Delisa says. Pascal Happy says prophetic was flowing. I was asking myself if I'm in the same church as Pastor Eddie. <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, um, I, I don't know that, you know, taking on from, from Minister Pascal's um, comment, we, we had... A teaching on Sunday during the catapult where yes. we're talking about the connection between the angelic the grace of God mm -hmm. right and 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 ministry we, we talked about those yes. things and the glory actually the glory. so so we talked about that and we we, we we mentioned that when you understand these things and understand how the kingdom flows you will walk in things mm -hmm. things that you don't necessarily have happening to you directly. Right. And and so today the streams of the prophetic were open, open. and people began to flow. And and it was good because you you kind of hear similar prophetic words from two, three, four, five, six, seven people in some cases. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taking, you know, taking note of, you know, what the prophet what the prophetic flow was. Seven, eight people in some cases, and and, and you could hear. I mean, some people out of the way to ten, ten, and and so that was really strong. Mm -hmm. That was really strong because by the time God was done with ten people saying something to you, you couldn't say you did not understand mm -hmm. what God was saying. There was direction; it was very clear. So it was a combination of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. The prophetic was also part of it, and so on and so forth. Hello, Minister Priscilla. God bless Hello, you. Hello, God. Good to Hi, have you Mr. on. Mr. Judy, welcome, welcome. Hey, how are you? And and so that was really profound. And mm. and yes, Minister Eddie, you know, he he he, he flowed profoundly on, on, on certain things. And um it, it is good to see that. It is good to see that. It is good to see that. And you would also see I mean it's it's pointless giving the names, but um Minister Eddie was flowing, Minister Pascal was flowing. Mm. You know, and she's making that comment. She was flowing. Minister <laughs> Ashley was flowing. Mm -hmm. Minister Felicity was flowing. Mm -hmm. Pastor Evelyn was flowing. Oh, yeah. It, it was Pastor an Pastor John. Pastor John. Pastor John, listen, you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, 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 Pastor you, you. John, Pastor Cynthia. You know, by the way, those of you who were on the on you know on the prayer line mm -hmm. and releasing all of these prophetic words, can you just go on and just make a comment? What was it like for you as you gave those prophetic words? Did you did you know you could flow like that, M Minister? Minister Bessem was flowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God! So you know, it's like almost saying. Minister Ashley says the children were flowing. Mm -hmm. That's right, children were flowing. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Pastor Comfort is like, um, you know, she's like an she, old. She's like a pro. Drunk she's... something. <laughs> old drunk. <laughs> Pastor Comfort, you, you're old drunk. Yeah, you're old drunk. <laughs> you, you've been in this thing. You've Ancient. been in this thing. Ancient but world. it is good to see <laughs> Jalisa was flowing, and and that's yes. the, that's that's the beauty of yes. it. That these things are for the body, right? They are for the body. Mm -hmm. They are for the body. Um, <laughs> Pastor Evelyn, are you starting a conversation? 
Thank you, Pastor Johnny. She gave you. She will give it today. She. Will. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor John is going to release. By the way, Pastor John, no pressure, no pressure. The point is this: you get connected to the grace that's present, and um, uh, mm. you're able to to know what direction you know to go. And 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 most importantly, the fact that um, I was present on the line. And describing to people what shifts were happening right. and how. That was beautiful. Yeah, that that was that, that's important. I, I remember years ago reading um, 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 from uh, Reverend Kenneth Hagin at the time, and he was talking about doing this kind of things, you know, um, helping people flow better in the prophetic, and and uh, how he would know if someone was going a different direction mm -hmm. from the flow. Uh, Minister Dominic happened to have said something. I'm not sure if she's on. Mm, that someone else who was flowing. Right now, yeah, she was she was flowing. She was flowing. And anyway, it is going to be beautiful because we are continuing our prayer time at midnight tonight. Tonight. So that is going to be roughly, what, four or five hours from now, something like that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness, um, how he came through. Mm -hmm. You know, ministering to people, and um, it, it it was wonderful. Okay, Pastor she says, is I'm on. saying something here. I okay. had to stop myself from second guessing what I was hearing and sensing. Yeah, I think that's very important. Yeah. you know, especially uh, coming from Pastor John. Elaborate, elaborate on yeah. that. Yeah, especially coming from Pastor John because that's a statement you make when you know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. She knows that th you know there are times when she's wondered. Am I hearing God, not hearing God, and, and so on and so forth. And so the, 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 the opportunity of today was able to show her that there is a way it comes. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and these things, you can only understand them with fellowship in that area. Yes. You have to fellowship yes. there. You have to stay on there um, uh, for quite some time. Uh, Minister Ashley says, I love how God created a safe space. That's right. That's right. Yes. A safe space for his people to come into their next. Um, you could feel the safety of the Lord. That's really Amen. good. Hallelujah. So, yes, you stop um, second guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. And you just say, because at some point I had to say, d d don't do anything. Don't just say what is coming to you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to interpret anything. Don't try to understand anything. Because if God is talking to you about something, it shouldn't be something that you know about. Right. You know, sometimes, again, that's where a lot of the challenges come in, where we want to interpret what God is saying before we can even um, say what we are seeing or hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The very first thing you want to do is say what you're seeing and hearing and all hearing because sometimes we see mm -hmm. sometimes we hear sometimes we experience both sometimes it's an impression mm -hmm. just a strong impression about something and you have to you know get yourself out of the way right oh come on that right there is huge yeah. you have to get yeah. yourself out of yeah. the way and release what you are you are seeing mm -hmm. or hearing or being impressed upon mm -hmm. without wanting to put your own twist to it you know, I, I, I truly believe that the, the children of Israel, the ten spies that were sent out, the nine that got themselves in trouble would not have gotten in trouble if they had just stated their observation. Right, right. And, and yeah. First of all, you know, I, I remember having um, been in an exercise of being a principal. And um, I, I could see that as we were making comments, people were struggling because they were moving between what they thought about what they were seeing and, and what was actually happening. Mm. And, and the clue um, um, at the time, you know, I, I said to the people, I said, how about you just state your observation? Right. Because if you just state your observation, someone else in the room would say something that you did not think about. Exactly. We are very limited in our perception. And sometimes we don't think so, you know. And so you have to let yourself come into that place mm -hmm. where you just state what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it is wrong, and then what? You know, it is not about your reputation, right? right? It's about the sovereignty of God. And right. when you are in that place,
place where you lean in completely to the sovereignty of God and you, it, going back to the example of this afternoon, mm -hmm. seeing how God was moving on more than one person at right. a time, when you just state what you observed or what you state what you saw or heard, mm -hmm. by the time everybody else is done then stating, you, get to know. you see a complete right, picture. Right, right, right. Yes, because sometimes the challenge is you don't want to say something because you didn't understand it. But it's not your word. You don't have to understand it. That's yeah. the thing. You know, the person for whom the word is meant understands exactly what it is about. You know, so sometimes God will give you a word for someone and you have no clue what the word is about. You will have to declare what you're hearing or what you're seeing, even though you don't understand it. The person that God is talking to understands exactly what God is referring to. And that's to. the person who is meant to understand. And that's the person who is meant to understand. So several times we don't say it because we didn't understand it and we forget that the word was not for us. Right. Right. And that's why the word of God, I mean, that's one of the, the, the applications of the word where we are told that we shouldn't think of ourselves more highly than we ought. Yes. So step away from that space. You are not the one to understand it. In, in the same token, Pastor Pauline, people have struggled with the healing ministry because they want to feel the healing. Exactly. You need to get out of that space. Yeah. The word of God says you will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You just go lay hands and get up. That's all you need to do, right? Just lay hands and get up. That's Minister right. Ashley says, uh, hold on. She says people receive, so this would be uh, 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 words that were, were, were time sensitive, mm -hmm. you know, uh, words that were very um, time sensitive. The maturity with which the words were delivered was so amazing, you could sense the divinity. And, and yeah. that's the thing. If you let yourself flow, God will carry you. Amen. Oh, that's If you it. let yourself flow, God, God is going to carry you. So you don't have to fake these things. You don't have to imagine them. You don't have to create them. You don't have to look at someone's shirt or someone's dress to give them a word. You will be seriously mistaken. Mm -hmm. So you need to get out of that place. So Minister Dominic was talking about what happened right after um, the grace moved at five. Mm -hmm. So, so... Uh, let me see if she wrote something about that over here. Um, okay, she says something here. Let me see if you can let me read that. I remember Pastor Peter stating that some people will be dependent on the things that they were told during this time. Yes. So in me, I told myself I would keep quiet and let others speak. Mm -hmm. Then I remember hearing, don't be selfish. That's good, because everyone was supposed to be involved, right? Don't be selfish. Um, you can hear also. Oh, wow. Now, see, 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 like someone might say a reverse psychology. Mm. Because you might think, I'm going to keep quiet. Because and, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Right. And God is saying, no, you are selfish, selfish. Because you can hear for someone else. Yes. And, and, and creating that flow where it's not just what you are receiving, but also what you're giving out keeps you washed in the word. The Bible oh, says that when we have fellowship one with another, mm -hmm. you see that uh, mm -hmm. cyclical thing that's going on, you have mm -hmm. fellowship with the other person, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. That's the reason why we do not forsake the assembling together of the brethren. Mm -hmm. We are like iron, uh, um, uh, and iron will sharpen iron, mm -hmm. right? Iron will sharpen iron because, of course, um, we are becoming better because someone else is becoming better. That's, that's, um, that's something. Anyone who wants friends must first show himself friendly, and we can go mm -hmm. on and on. So she says, so I found myself, I, I, you know, I jumped. I, 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 that's deliberate. So I found myself taking, talking before some, some voice could come in and tell me I was making things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting how you, uh, so, so, Pastor Pauline, there is this conversation about our emotions and the, 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 the navigating, if you would, of, of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. We are living in a natural world and we use our senses to 
feel our way through. God right. did it that way. It's not, it's, not, it's not the devil. God did it that way. <laughs> God did it in such a way that if it's hot in the room, my senses should be able to pick that so that I would know what I'm supposed to do. I, I, I can move away from high temperatures because they wouldn't do me good. Mm -hmm. I can move away from very cold temperatures because they wouldn't do me good. I can, I can dress in layers, mm -hmm. you know, because, because, you know, I, it's not time for me to die. That's, <laughs> that's why God gave us, you know, emotions. He gave us our senses. And a brain. <laughs> and a brain that also is able to interpret those readings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is able to interpret those things. So, so. In the realm of the natural, that's what we used to go by. Mm -hmm. But one can become so dependent on their five senses and consequentially their emotions that in the spirit realm, they become um, limited yes. in their flow. So, so you have to make sure that the natural doesn't tell you what you should do in the spirit. Right. That's very important. Yes. Hallelujah. So, Minister Dominic, that, that, was, that was powerful right there. Pastor Emily says, at some point, my feet and hands were on fire, especially mm. during the different shifts. And I see Pastor Jun saying the same thing. As the prophetic words were coming forth, I could feel heat and sensations under my feet. Right. And at times, tingling in my hands. And it's important to take note of those different um, dealings, right. you know. God has those different ways in which he deals with his people. It's important for you to begin to pay attention to how he deals with you. Um, different people have different um, experiences. Their experiences are diverse. You know, so one person's exper experience may not be yours. But it's important that as you continue in this exercise, if you would, you also pay attention to how the informations come to you it will begin to build um, a repertoire in your system on how God deals with you as a person. So the next time you have a certain sensation, you will know. Do you know when the Spirit of God is calling you into a place of prayer? Come on. Do you know when he's telling you, come away with me? Do you, do you know how, what happens to you when, you when he's saying, I need to spend time with you, like right now? You could be in the midst of watching a movie or you could be talking with friends and... It comes. Do you know what happens? And do you know how to respond to it? So being able to follow yourself up with stuff like that helps you understand how, how God will impress something in your spirit for you to know this is something he's saying and doing. And even when you try to ignore it, what happens? Right. You know, some people would hold on to what God is saying until they begin to physically vibrate. Yeah, or perspire. Or perspire. Yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> so it happens to different people differently. You should be able to follow yourself up. And w with time, by reason of use, like scripture says, mm -hmm. you are able to build a repertoire for yourself on how God deals with you. Because there are such personalized dealings. Right. And, yeah. and how, many of you, how many of you have noticed that in, in these uh, um, teachings, these experiences, God begins to clearly show you the difference between hearing him at that time and how your body reacts to what you've heard mm -hmm. and what you consider haven't heard him at other times. Right. And that's the reason why in areas like marriage, people make a lot of errors mm. because they think that what they are hearing is actually God. Meanwhile, it is their emotions that speak in and right. speaking loudly. And I, 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 I love the way this, this man of God put it, put it. You have to have heard God in the following areas before you can authenticate the voice of God in, in, in areas like marriage. Number one, you must have heard God in the area of finances. And when I talk about finances, I'm talking about giving. If you've not heard God in the area of giving, you cannot authenticate the voice that tells you things. Mm. Number one. Number two, if you haven't heard God in the area of serving in the house of God, right? in the area of serving in the house of God, what your ministry is, and so on and so forth, then it will be challenging for you to authenticate whatever it is that you're hearing in things like marriage. First of all, it's, 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 it contradicts scriptural order right. for you to hear about marriage and you have not heard about service. 
Right. Because marriage is ministry. If God is talking to you about a spouse, there is something you're supposed to be doing in the life of that spouse. So if he has not spoken to you about who you are and your assignment, he cannot be sending you to go and help, to be a help to somebody. Help the person do what? So, so that means you have to know what he's having you do and you have to know what the other person is doing. Exactly. So, so because that's the basis of, of complimenting. Exactly. Right? That's the basis of complimenting. So, so Pastor Pauline, how about people who say, you know, he is in ministry. She is in ministry. I remember when we were growing up, right? Mm. I remember when, when we were growing up. You, you are great with music, by the way. And um, um, I remember when we were growing up and, and we were talking ministry and people were aspiring aspiring to be in ministry I, I still remember a lot of guys who would say you know what the, you know i'm going to marry someone who knows how to sing mm -hmm. because those were the highlights yeah the highlights was okay before you come and preach a fire message you have to have a wife that's going to come and sing powerfully for you before you preach yeah so it was like the ultimate of ministry is the, the fire brother marries the fire sister who can sing. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 was, it was quite interesting. And, and you see me. how those things affected people. Yeah. And, and, and today you can, you can see that people would say something like, okay, you want to marry him, where is the money? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the money, it means he can't be the one. So, so there are a lot of things that people look onto and they direct the voice of their emotions to contradict whatever God has for them in the in, in the place of, of of the spirit. So guys, you must make sure, you must make sure that the voice of your emotions don't come in and begin to distort the voice of the spirit. Yeah. Because those are the things that clog the pipes of God's elect. Ooh, let's let's I, I, I have to tell you this. I have yes, to tell you this. Because you you bit. The fact that you are God's elect doesn't mean that your pipes aren't clogged. Yeah. The reason why you are on a fast and you feel hungry is because your pipes are clogged. Believe me. Ouch. <laughs> I'm telling you. Ouch. Believe me. You can't just be hungry. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Anointed by clogged. Yes, anointed by clogged. <laughs> the reason why you, you, you find yourself having anger fits uh, is because your Shana. pipes are clogged. You have things in your pipes that are messed up. Listen, you can have great spiritual delivery, but very poor. At the same time, at the same time, at the same time, great spiritual delivery, meaning everything God said, you said it. But have very, very negative, very, very poor human delivery. Mm -hmm. Right? This is very important for us to understand. In other words, you could be saying, yeah, that's what God said to me. And you go ahead and you say what God said. Because I know, I know when people say things like, hey, guess what? I'm just going to say the way God said it. That's right. Give it to you raw like I get Give it to you raw. But you don't understand that because we are affected by what we hear, when God is speaking to you, he is a God of love. Mm -hmm. He is a God of love. And all things spring forth from love. Yes. When you are now delivering and you're hearing aspects of judgment in the midst of it, it could get you to be sore. You just become sour about the situation. You can be angry on God's behalf <laughs> for what yeah. God is saying. Haven't have we seen that? No, you've seen that, right? Or you may have experienced yeah. it. You yeah. could be angry on God's behalf and God is looking at you and saying, Hey, don't kill my people for me. Right. I am releasing the word so I can redeem them. Right. I'm not releasing the word so I can kill them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, so you have to think about this. The prophetic... Uh, or word of knowledge or word of wisdom, you know, talking about revolutionary gifts, they are not there so that God's people can die. You know? Mm. We must remember Buanages, right? Sons of yes. thunder. We must remember that. That God's intention is not to destroy the very ones that he came to save. He's here to seek and to save that which was lost. So yes, uh, um, um, the, the, the experience was wonderful. When we release prophetic words, we release them so we can build people. That's right. 
We can build people. Now, That's very important. Yeah. We also had uh, one of the experiences, you, you know, uh, we are talking about uh, um, having tingling sensations and, and, mm -hmm. and um, sensing the glory. Heat, fire. Heat, fire. Uh, I think it was Minister Felicity who was giving a word, and you could know that she was having an experience while she's giving that word, yeah. right? Yeah. Very powerful. We also know that in, in the Word of God's account of Moses and Miriam and Aaron, God was able to explain that he speaks to Moses face to face, right? But he speaks to these other ones in dreams Dreams and visions. And dreams, yeah. so, so you can see over there that one can receive a word and they are very calm. And another one receives a word and the word is shaking them all over the place, mm. right? Um, we know there was a, a word that came forth from, from Minister Eddie and, and uh, you know, he just broke down and, and yes. he, that, that was very, very, uh, wow, that was uh, tough for him. And, and, and that's one of the things I explained before we came into that session that, you know, you will flow in a way that it's not typically you. And so you have to be composed. I mean, there were people who were doing other things while they were on the prayer line. And I, and I said to them, I said, you have to be connected because you're dealing with people's lives. Mm -hmm. This right here is a matter of life and death. You don't, you don't play with people's lives, especially when you're giving revelation and knowledge. You have to be so connected that you don't say something that would instead, you know, uh, um, um, put someone in jeopardy mm -hmm. or something like that. And that does not mean that the word that Minister Eddie release was problematic um, um, uh, in itself but i'm saying as a minister you have to build yourself so that the words you receive are able to be carried by you that's that is huge and it's important for us to understand that being a mouthpiece for god is a responsibility yes it's not it's not showmanship yeah you know, the, God has to help us to be aware of that and walk in that consciousness. It will help keep us humble, number one. Number two, it will, it will really allow us to communicate the heart of the Father. Right. Because when, when it becomes um, a platform by which you show other people that you are, an, you are part of an elite class, mm. then you have moved from service Right. into um, show business. You Come move on. from service into a, some kind of platform, a performance-based mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. But that's not the agenda. Mm -hmm. God doesn't speak through you to his people right. just so he can, you know, impress the people <laughs> with, with you. your life. <laughs> that yeah. is not the agenda. That is not yeah, the plan. That is not the plan. So, so, so words of, of, of revelation and not God's platform for validation. Right. <laughs> right. You, you can write that somewhere. You can write that somewhere. It, it's going to help you. Hallelujah. So you don't say, oh, I gave three prophetic words. That means that, you know, it, it, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that God, <laughs> God is God. Hallelujah. God wants to speak to his people. Yeah. People have been in the presence of God. They've been talking to him. And he decides that he would use you. It's an honor mm -hmm. and a privilege to be used by him. He decides to use you to answer the prayer of one of his children. That does not suddenly make you a superstar. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's just God being God. And you have to be grateful Amen. that he used you. It's an honor and a privilege, you know. And it's a responsibility. Scripture talks about being able to steward the gift of God. If God is going to release a word into someone's life using you, you have to be careful to be a good steward of that word that you're releasing. It is a responsibility. So we don't take it lightly. You don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. You know, um, Minister Ashley says, I was at work during, that, during this prayer time. I felt the Holy Spirit in my office. In that moment, I knew it was a correction. So she's saying that when she felt the Spirit of God in her office, she knew that she was being rebuked. Mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be here now you're supposed to be connected to me that's what she's saying she mm -hmm. said i had to leave work he told me that i did not want to pay the price for doing something else while he is speaking to his people 
Um, oh. It was a lovely rebuke. I felt the love of God so oh, intense. God. So that's that's really powerful right there. That was really powerful. Um, Thank yeah, you, Jesus. Yeah, I, I mean, th there are several times when we just kind of um, take as it were without honor the things of God. And Pastor Peter, it's so delicate. Sometimes we don't even realize that it's some kind of dishonor. Mm -hmm. We just tell ourselves, well, I can multitask. You know, I can be praying and, I don't know, cooking at the same time. I could be praying and doing my hair. I could be, and, and these are all possibilities. So you have to discern the moment. You know, but being able to discern the moment is where the challenge comes in. The fact that you could be driving and praying does not mean you should drive, drive and, and pray, pray all, all the time. The time. <laughs> you know, God, God knows when you, you, you could be completely focused on him. If you now choose to take that time to say, oh, let me just dash to the store and get this. Meanwhile, it's ti the time when he's calling you into a place of prayer. Then you have your priorities mixed up. Very different from if you are driving and he says, I need for you to talk with me on something. And then now you know, you're, he knows, he understands you're driving and you're talking with him. He's right. not saying it's not a possibility, but we have to know how to descend the moment to also know when it's not appropriate to, to I, I, try to do both. First of all, I believe that... When it, he wants it, your full attention. Right. Yeah. I believe that it has to do with, with um, the child of God not understanding the different forms of prayer. Right. And, and their application. Jesus would be walking and he would raise someone who's dead. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But then you will not tell Jesus not to tarry one hour in prayer. See, see, see that right there? Yes. So there, there are things that have to happen and can only happen in the secret place. Yes. And if you haven't built yourself in the secret place, um, there are some things you will not be able to, 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 to handle in your public ministry. So there is oh, a private you have to ministry. Say that again. Yes, you have to stay there for a little so bit. So there is yeah. private ministry and there is public ministry. Yes. Private ministry is, is the <laughs> hideout exercise that you carry with God. Hideout. So it is your hideout response to God. Mm -hmm. Very important. Private ministry. Is your hideout response to God? What, what, what does that mean? God loves you in a certain way. God lifts you up in a certain way. God is building you up in a certain way. Your response to that is a hideout. Where you go in a secret place and you stay there and you say, Father, I've come. So like you were building me yesterday, build me up. Come on. Like you were talking to me yesterday, I've come here where there is no one so I can listen to you. That's right. So... A omission of honor in our hideout will reveal itself in the public ministry. Did you all hear that? Okay. It will reveal itself in the omission public ministry. Omission of honor in your hideout will reveal itself in public ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have to understand there is a, a private ministry, mm -hmm. which is your response to God, right? And then that response gets you to the point where God takes you into your public ministry. Now, Pastor Kone, I need to say something right there. Yes, sir. And this is the thing. You can be in the public ministry. You can be in the public ministry without having been in the private ministry. Mm -hmm. This is a thing because God does not wait for you to be made. Before he showcases you. This is important. For people to understand. God does not wait for you to be refined. Before, before you're showcased. He, uses you. he does not wait for you to be refined. Before he uses you. But now to the wise. A time must be allotted. I am going to my father. Yeah. That is important. Yeah. And when we say I am going to my father. We should also be saying. I am going to my furnace. Okay, I'm going to my father. I'm going to. I'm my going furnace. to my furnace. I'm going to my furnace. That is important uh, for you to understand. So if you're going to say I'm going to the father, 
You must also say, I'm going to the furnace. And you must also say, I am going to eat. I am going to be fed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are all things that happen with, you know, in your hideout with the Lord. That, first of all, it is not possible to be ministering and be ministered unto to the dimension that you're sustained. So please understand this. The sustainable uh, uh, um, 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 nutritional value that we obtain as born again children of God is done in our private time yes. with God. Because you can be a preacher and while you're preaching, you're getting inspiration to release the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, that inspiration you're, re you're, you're receiving isn't feeding you. It is enhancing the feeding of God's sheep. Yes. And so you do not take that. Um, 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 Pastor, Pastor Edmond Younger says, being in the garden alone, the secret place. Yes, you have to have a secret place. You have to have a secret place. It, it, it is very important. Now, we know very well from the word of God that Moses will spend time in the presence of God. And while he's spending time in the presence of God, Joshua will come along and spend an hour extra. Now, was it really an hour extra? Not necessarily. It was the time that he set after he had learned the presence from another man of God. I, I, I hope you understand what I'm yeah. saying. So, so, yeah, we could say learning from another oh, man of God, but it is more so learning from another child of God. I, I, I see how you pray in your private place. I see how many hours, uh, I'm hearing the word demur. I hear, you know, how many hours you're, you're, dwelling, you're dwelling in that place. You're, you're staying in that place, right? Yeah. And while that is happening to you, your child can say, oh, I see what daddy is doing. So your first hour is an hour of observation. Mm -hmm. But your second hour is your hour of practice. So, so it, you're literally saying, walk with me and learn. Mm -hmm. When I'm done walking, you go back, take those steps, and see how it's working for you. See how it is working for you. See how it is working for you. Moses walked with a rod. Joshua wasn't supposed to walk with a rod. Mm -hmm. He walked with the word of the Lord coming forth from his mouth. That's the reason why we are being called the Joshua generation. There's something else that is happening here. So if you have to grow in your public ministry, you have to go back. Permit me say go back and grow in your private ministry. Mm. Pastor Peter, I remember my, my experiences with mom when she would have me pray with her. I, I, I mean, I... <laughs> from the beginning I used to be so scared of having to pray with mom like what do I say I didn't even want her to hear me pray but in, in that place where from the beginning it, it was a, a, a place of fear not as in dread but as in reverence right where I'm now saying, okay, but I don't, I don't want her to hear me mm. because I'm afraid of making a mistake. Right. God began to teach me how to listen mm, in. Come on, come on. Listen in on her praying. And I began to pay attention to the way she prayed. And I will listen in. You and see, I will listen in. You see that right there? Yes. These are the hidden treasures. Yes. These are the hidden treasures. You know, you don't know a man of God until you've come that close. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know a woman of God until you've come that mm -hmm. close. It's like saying, come walk with me. See how I rise and fall. And then rise. Right. See that what the world considers rising and falling does not exist in my life because I am always rising. Ah, it's just something. It's oh just something there. But you will, not, you will not get that until you come close. You have to be close. You have to be close. You have to be close. It's, it's like you would say to me sometimes, you would say, wait, 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 wait. Let me understand something. You and I are here like this, and then now you've just heard God. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but it began to create something with you. You began to you, you, you let yourself come into the simplicity. Yes. The simplicity of God. And, and because I remember when we, on, on Tuesday we were talking about the gentleman, you know, who came into that space 
where he said, I struggle to pray in tongues. Right. I struggle to get baptized in the Holy Ghost because of all of these um, 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 limitations. Yeah. said, so, but when Pastor Peter came and laid hands on me, he also said, pray out loud. Yes. And he said, when I opened my mouth, then it just came, it out. Just came out. Okay, so that's the thing, right? Yes. So now you know, oh, wait a minute. I was my own hindrance, not God. <laughs> not that he didn't want to give me. I was putting these limitations on my path, right? And so we get to learn those things when we really come close. Right. I, and I believe these few days, so many people have had the opportunity of coming an inch in praying with me. <laughs> right. You know, you've, you've come an inch with, in praying with, with me. With a retreating upwards. With a retreating upwards. So now you begin to understand, oh, wait a minute. He just came from a program and he's ready to fast again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So by doing that, I'm showing you that fasting after a program is okay. Yes. Because many times we want to fast before the program. Because you <clears throat> sometimes, not always, but you have to also, you know, evaluate your motives. Yes. You know, what makes you fast before the program? Is it because you are very concerned about <laughs> wanting to make sure that the people are blessed? Or because you're very concerned about wanting to make sure your reputation is in place. Like you want the, the power of God to move when it is your session. You know, like we had the, the panelists. If a right. panelist is going on a fast, is she fasting for the entire program? Or she's fasting for the portion where she has to speak? Mm. Like, mm, God, you have to move when I'm speaking. When I say one word, the power of God should just move all over the place. So you, you are fasting, yes, but your, your motive for fasting is wrong. It's about you. It's about um, an opportunity to be seen and heard, an opportunity to make a name for yourself. Right. And God is looking at you and wondering, what exactly are you doing? Mm. But if you have a life of fasting, then you recognize, number one, it is not just about you. You are fasting for the entire encounter. Right. You are praying for the people. You are praying the heart of the Father concerning that schedule. Mm -hmm. The God who gave that catapult, for example, as something he wants done. You want his will. He had something in mind when he gave that as an instruction. And you're praying his mind into manifestation. Mm. It, it completely shifts everything. It takes the focus off of you. Right. And then God decides how he wants to move, who he wants to use at whatever time. You know, right up to Friday evening, you were asking me, who is speaking tonight? I don't know. <laughs> no, we're like, okay, whoever God gives the word to will speak. You know, and that's what we have always been. That has been our lives because it's not been about who is being seen and who is being heard. Right. It's always been about who, what God is saying and whoever he decides to say it through. And it's the same thing that we, we, we do with the people that is entrusted in our care where we're able to say, listen in on God. You know, God will speak to you as well, right. speak through you as well. And whatever he says is what goes. You know, I was talking with someone earlier on today and I was telling them, I, the conversation was about the, the shut in and the person was talking about how they were blessed by the different speakers and how each person came and addressed something in their lives. And, you know, the focus being how I came up with the topics. And I told them there were no topics. <laughs> I didn't have any topics. I, all I had to do was ask God, Father, who do you want? Who do you want to speak through? And he gave me the names of the people that he wanted. I took the names, hand, passed it on to the person who was responsible for the flyer after communicating with the people. Mm -hmm. And they sent their pictures. And I, in the place of prayer, God told me clearly, like he's always been faithful, he would talk to them before I can even get to them. Right. So by the time I was reaching each panelist, God had already spoken to them. They knew before I could call them. Some of them, some of them, I didn't want to pick up like, oh no, <laughs> they were trying to have one because God had already told them why I was calling them. So in a place of prayer, God spoke to each of them and told them what so they were going to say. Just, just hold on right there. Do you see, oh my God, I love the, the craftsmanship. Mm, that's a good way of you saying know, it. You know, the craftsmanship within God's wisdom. Yes. Because God sits and comes to the connector. Because I, I want to look at you in this case as being a connector. Okay. He comes to you, you are the connector. And you also have the platform. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then he says to you, this person, this one, right. this one, this one, this one. They, w oh, Jesus Christ. Because you could talk about everything that everyone talked about, mm -hmm. but they have the experience. Yes. They have the ingredients My that God. are needed when those words are released. Yes. So God Ooh, comes into the brokenness. Oh my God. <laughs> God comes into the brokenness and begins to release those words. And as he's releasing those words, the oil, oh, <clears throat> the oil that comes from their experience begins my to God. flow. Now, nobody knows that oil is flowing in the room because no one is oh, physically Rabbi seeing Shata. oil flow in the room, right? But oil is flowing in my the room God. and it's going down the feet of the ladies present and, and like in our own case, the, the men present mm -hmm. or like in the other case, the, the, the children, young people, the young yeah. people present and the oil begins to saturate them and they begin to have an experience and they say, what you said, changed me yes now you can put those same words in another environment and no one will be changed that's right that's right so the words in themselves are containers of the glory oh my god and they begin to release the things that they contain as they begin to touch the women oh my god this is listen guys i'm telling you but 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 if you are not an eliezer Mm, that's I mean, I'm, I'm going back that, to that place. If you are not an Eliezer, and, and for those of you who have read the Word of God, you see how often the Word of God uses the word or the name Eliezer to, 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 to describe priests in their rightful place, right? Eliezer, it's, um, it's just amazing. It's amazing. So, so yeah, go ahead. It, it, it's just, oh. Uh, so that, was, that was quite interesting, you know. So we didn't have any topics given out. God just simply gave us names of the people that are supposed to be speaking. Oh. And he had gone ahead and spoken to them to let them know they will be speaking during the shut-in. So when I was reaching out to them, it, it, it's information they already knew. So my job was easy, right? And when they came, even down to the coordinators, right. God had to say, no, this one is coordinating, this one no. You know, he, he handpicked the people that he wanted. And so God was not looking for DJs. No. He wasn't mm -hmm. looking for animators. And that is huge, you know, because most of the time when you think about a coordinator, you want someone who is up big, someone who can, you know, animate. And, mm. and, and God is saying, you, you have to hear me on who I want. Ooh. You know, <laughs> he decides who he wants because the same who ascended is the same who descended and feels all things. He knows who is perfect in a particular spot at a particular time mm. to communicate a particular truth. That does not mean the person that was not picked at that time is incompetent. It simply means at that time to communicate that particular truth, God had ordained for this particular individual to be the one he was going to use. And the rest of us have to be okay with that. You know, uh, so that is huge. And, and it was just beautiful to be able to sit in the room and receive from these women, like everybody else. You know, so this particular person I was talking with was saying, I thought you gave them the topics to, uh, no, I had no idea what they were going to say. <laughs> and that is another place also as, as, as a visionary or as someone, a leader. Mm -hmm. How, how flexible are you to come into a place of delegation without micromanaging? You see, that's the reason why the only way that this, in, in the course of life and ministry, that it's been, it's been described to me. I saw my pastor do it. Mm -hmm. I saw how she would sit there and say, you know, you, you guys go ahead. And I'm thinking, mom said we should go ahead. This is deep, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because you're thinking... Mom, hey, you know, <laughs> she, so she's believing that you, when you lay hands, something will happen, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so seriously speaking, um, um, the administration of spiritual gifts within a congregation or the body of Christ is really a, a, a thing that is perfected by what we would consider a circle of trust. Yes. You must be so trusted, oh not God. of the individual, but of God. I That's am not telling you That's this. It. Not of the individual, but, but, of, but God. of God. So, so if I am with the men, 
I mean, there's the something that happened. Um, there's the, the something that that's that's happened these few days that is 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 getting men of God speaking. We men of God speaking all mm. around leaders in the body of Christ. And um, there was a, a man of God who was talking about not knowing something. Mm -hmm. And you and I were talking about it, and actually you 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 were quite vocal about it, and, and you said, how can you say as a head minister, as a head pastor, the senior pastor, how can you say you do not know or that you don't know? And and that's the thing, child of God. That's the thing. As 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 one in an apostolic role. Before we even talk about apostolic office, that's just you know over on the other side. In an apostolic role, any kind of leadership role. Uh, a, a bishopric role, if you want, or a, sh a shepherd role. As long as you are a leader, you do not macromanage, but you have to know what it is that's going on. Because the Lord God comes to you to ask you questions on what is going on. You have to know how to render account. You can't say this is, you know, whatever that is. So in this case, you are flowing in an apostolic role, and the loopholes, so to say, mm -hmm. the loopholes in, in, in awareness, are covered up or filled up by trust. Mm -hmm. And in that trust, God goes and he begins to handle, you know, whatever needs to be handled. And you come in and you say, yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's what God said. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what God said. And, and I, have, I have also seen you come in as one with a summarized sword, and you say, no, you keep quiet. That's not something you're supposed to do. I mean, my, you know, my, you know, mm -hmm. our pastor would do a little <laughs> bit more interestingly than that. But yeah, she did come with a summarized sword. You better be saying what God is you saying and, and, and not be saying some things that just came out of your flesh. It, it is very mm -hmm. imp important. So you understand that the, the circle of trust the circle of trust is the foundation upon which an effective ministry is built. Mm -hmm. The circle of trust. I, I remember having taken a, um, um, a series of courses in, in uh, management. And um, they were, one of the things that they told us, they said, effective management, effective management is the result of trusting where you aren't skilled and or gifted. Mm -hmm. Now, that's in the natural. And of course, it's a mouthful building that up. What I just said right now is a mouthful. But in the spirit, you never know how God will speak because there are two things now that you don't know. You don't know what the person will do mm -hmm. and you don't know what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. And God is not planning to tell you so that he can soothe your emotions. No, he's not going to do that. He expects us. The word of God says the just shall live by faith. Right. Mm -hmm. He also expects you, permit me to say, to be faith in, in ministry, <laughs> <Yeah>? okay? <laughs> to be believing in ministry. And, and, you know, I just wanted to play with that word faith and believing because sometimes people say, well, faith is not believing and believing is not. I don't know what that means. But God wants you to trust through and, and through. Trust that he is sovereign enough to pass through a vessel and release his word without that word being tainted by anything. Mm -hmm. And, and that is why the shot in was that powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It was, yeah. it was powerful. Yeah, and, and, and to piggyback on the thing that you mentioned about um, how can you say that you do not know, it, it, it's not um, a statement to suggest that as a minister of the gospel, you know everything. Right. No, because scripture shows us that you can be a prophet and not know. Right. You know, Elisha was very vocal about that when he said, Something is definitely going on and with God a Shunammite woman me. and God hid it from me. So we understand that you may not necessarily know everything that is happening, you know, but understanding that your position as an apostle or your position as the senior pastor or your position as the, the supervisor at your job requires that you know. Not because you are a superman and you have the ability to know, but the, just the mere fact that I did not know is not, a, it's not considered a valid excuse with people. It makes you even more vulnerable. 
you know, as a minister of the gospel when now we bring it to the house of God. Because when, when something happens with one person, mm. it's a reflection on everyone else. And I, I want to believe that wisdom would say, put yourself in that person's shoes and see how that fits. Right. Are you sure that if you were in that situation, you will be better? Mm. Because sometimes when we see something happening with somebody else, the tendency is to want to criticize. Right. But would you, could you have been better if you were put in that person's shoes? Because when we are talking about being able to be informed or be abreast of everything that's going on, not because you're a superman or you have this mm. supernatural prophetic ability that you know everything. No, that's not it. But go, it, it's about that, that total dependence on God. And the, 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 the side effect to that is that your trust in God and your dependence on God and subsequently your trust in God's ability through the people mm -hmm. can become the same reason why you're blind, blindsided. Yeah. Because if I am in a place of trust, mm -hmm. I'm trusting God and I'm trusting him to move through his <coughs> people, I am all equally trusting that if there is something, then the people that I've trained will know to bring it up to me. Come on. So even if I sense something, I can easily dismiss it mm. because the people have not said anything. Circle of trust. Circle of trust. I, I you know, I, Mrs. Baby Girl is here with us in the studio. I can have an impression in, a, in my place of prayer and then I say something like, but well, Miss Baby Girl know to come to me with stuff like that if there's anything. So I can easily dismiss it as maybe my, my brain is wandering and thinking things, right. right? And I'm telling myself, okay, she will definitely come up to me. Mm -hmm. And then after the whole thing is said and done, then you start going back in retrospect and say, I bet I saw this, you know. I had a hint like this, but I dismissed it. You know, so those things happen. And when stuff like this begins to manifest, it helps us know how to pray. You look at your life, you look at the, the, the different servants of God in the body of Christ, and it brings you into a place of prayer. Yes. Because you're, you're telling yourself, God, help us, help all of us. Yeah. We want to be on top of things, but we know that we are not God. We are men. Right. We are men, like everyone else. You know, but we want to stay sensitive and we're trusting Jehovah as we continue to teach and we continue to preach and we continue to pray that the enemy will not have a foothold. Hence, hence yeah. a circle of trust. Yes. The, this trust is very, very, very important. I, I remember there was, a, there was a situation a few years back where a minister, something happened. There was a, a, a service going on and miracles were flowing. And as the miracles were flowing, whatever this whole thing was, they brought someone in and, and they called the pastor, they called the man of God and they said, man of God, come on, come on, come on. There's, there's someone here and, and, and he came and he's trying to find out what is going on. There is commotion. And the next thing they said, okay, someone who's dead has been raised to life. And then, of course, you know, people are just hysterical about the whole thing and so many emotions and things are happening in the, in, 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 in the, in the room. And you can see him asking, like, so wait, tell me what exactly happened here? But by the time this whole thing could be contained, news had gone all over the place that someone was raised from the dead and because you know they started investigating was this person actually dead or not dead and, 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 and that and it was a crazy thing that was going on and of course this affected this man of god's ministry because now they're saying well you said you raised a, a dead person but this was fake and he's saying listen i am still trying to find out what happened so so yes um, and that's the reason why you can only operate from this place called trust. Yeah. There are no two ways. And, and if, 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 if it is one of those things where God needs to vindicate you, then he will vindicate you. 
you know, and, and I, I believe me, child of God, I must tell you this. It is not every, <laughs> it is not every accusation that comes your way. It is not every accusation that God steps into. No. Um, some of them, he just leaves it alone. He, he just let the oh whole thing God. run its course. Oh God. And, and, and so please, never, 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 mm. never try to fix your name. You don't have the tools. I can tell you that right now. Mm. You don't have the tools. And, and the reason why you don't have the tool to vindicate or the tools to vindicate your name is because, number one, you don't have what it takes to permeate people's perceptions and understandings. You don't have it. You don't have it. It doesn't matter what you say. Perception is perception. Most of the time, they've already made up their minds. And people, Hence perception. <laughs> people will crucify you, right. in the, you know, in the court of public opinion before they can even hear your side of the story. Uh, so you telling your side of the story does not change their minds at all. Mm, uh, and mm, most of the mm, time, that's mm. the reason why most often God will say something like, you don't have to tell your side of the no, story. No, you don't have just to. Just let it be yeah. and, and, and trust God. And as children of God, let me just say this. As children of God, we have to learn how to give other children of God the benefit of the doubt. Not just jump into, you know, join to criticize all oh, this, all oh, that. I mean, everybody has something to say. Facebook has given, thank God for Facebook. Facebook has given all of us the permission and the voice and, you know, to say whatever we want to say and, hey, nobody can do anything to you. So everybody has a, an opinion. Everybody has their own thing they must say right. concerning everybody and about everything. You know, so... It comes back to your personal discipline. Can you discipline yourself enough to be quiet simply because you must not comment on everything? Do you have the discipline enough to, if you have to comment, to be graceful and not be bashful against anybody just simply because you have a phone and you can type a sentence in English or in French or whatever language it is that you speak. We have to learn to be graceful because yeah. these things are seeds. You want to make sure you're sowing the right seeds. You don't need to harvest what if you don't like the harvest, please don't put the seed in the ground. Yeah. Because what you are sowing as a seed today, you when this harvest comes, it always comes good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. So if you are bashful against a, a, a man of God because you're thinking he did not address a certain thing the way you think he should have, be very careful how you do that. Mm -hmm. And this is not a touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm kind of gospel, which many people are offended with, and yet it is the word of God. It is basic, simple Jesus saying, <laughs> do unto others what you want them to do unto you. Basic, simple seed time and harvest. Mm. If you don't want good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over bashfulness coming to you, don't be bashful when you're talking about somebody else's plight. Don't manifest a sense of superiority when you're talking about something that someone else is going through right. and you belittle them and you, you, know, you tell them off, you, you insult them, you tell them how they are good for nothing, how they failed and... Meanwhile, you may not have done anything different if you were in their shoes. Mm. You know, how many people are saying, how can he say he didn't know? How many, how many things in your own life do you know? Right. Just government of self. Do you know where you left your keys? It's your <coughs> own keys and you've been looking for it for two days. <coughs> and yet you, you, you are not graceful dealing with a, a man like you who has thousands and thousands and thousands of people that God has entrusted in his care. And it's impossible for him to know what is happening with every single person. Hallelujah. You know, so he has to move into, we all have to move into that place where you trust God and his ability to work with the, in the lives of the people as you trust that, as you're releasing the word of God, they are receiving and they will respond the way God expects people to respond. Because again, as ministers of the gospel, our job is to teach. We're teaching now. You are listening to us. You have a decision to receive what we are saying or not to receive it. And that's the reason why in every congregation you have people in different calibers. <laughs> not because they are, they are receiving private tu tutoring at different times. First Corinthians chapter 10, 
they all drank from the same spiritual rock. They were all baptized into Moses they, in, in the sea, it. in the Red Sea, but they did not all make it. Why? They all listened to the same person at the same time, but they received different portions based on their, uh, their connectivity and their response to what was being said. So there's a, there's a proverb that you can take a horse to the river, but you cannot force it to drink. Right. So the word goes forth. Each person determines their harvest by how they receive the word. Script Jesus said, take it how you hear. Because the measure with which you hear, it will be measured back to you. So how you receive the word of God will determine your output. So Jesus was speaking parable of the sower. Some had 30-fold harvest. Some had 60-fold har harvest. Some had 100-fold harvest. They sowed seeds, but the harvest was different. So each person has a responsibility to receive the word and act on the word. We have to be graceful. Let us be graceful in our dealings with people and remain in a place of trust, not necessarily trusting the individuals per se, because scripture is clear or not putting your confidence in man, but trusting God's ability in the person. That is what will enable us not to move into micromanaging. Yeah. Because that's what we're talking about and we did this segue. You, you, know, you know, Pastor Pauline, in, in, in Luke chapter 5, we find in verse 15, I mean, I mean, I can read verse 15 and 16. You find that, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus, let me just read it. Let me just read it. Um, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 5, rather. Luke chapter 5, verse 15. The Bible says, but the news about Jesus spread all the more. Mm -hmm. And the great crowds came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Yet he frequently withdrew to the wilderness to pray. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you see Jesus and the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus could touch anyone and they would be healed. But Jesus understood that power over sickness, power over disease, power over wickedness, power over demonic spirits is only gained as you frequently withdraw to pray. So someone might say, you know what? There's a whole lot to be resolved. So why don't I stay out there resolving the things? But God is saying, no, pull away from that yes. and get back into your prayer, prayer closet. Yes. Right? There are people who have gone on trips. And while they are out there on their trip, the enemy comes in and does something major. Yes. And, and oh, so yes. I can see how you can return from the trip and, and you're busy moving around to try to resolve whatever it is that happened. And God is saying, no, sir, no, ma'am. This is the time instead for you to retreat and be in a place of prayer because you might be saying something and digging deeper holes. Yeah. Right? Hence our reason for retreating upwards. Upwards, yes. Children of God, let me tell you something. For the little time that I've been in the gospel, and for the rest of the time that I haven't been in the gospel, but read books of people who have been in the gospel, I have seen well over a hundred years of ministry. And <laughs> I look at well, I mean, I'm telling you seriously, well over a hundred years in ministry. And 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 by a well over a hundred years, I'm also including the word of God oh right my here. God. Well over a hundred years, and we can go into further years in ministry. As you read these things, you begin to see, oh no, the best medicine for anything is my relationship with God. That's it. From beginning to end. My relationship with God, my relationship with God, my relationship with God, my relationship with God, and more of my relationship with God, yes. and then more relationship with God, <laughs> and then you come into more refinement and more relationship yes. with God, and then more relationship with God and more relationship with God. Right? This is important. I remember listening to a man of God a few days ago, and he said, well, you know, I cannot call such and such a person from a respectable name because I am my own apostle. And I was like, ooh, that's deep. Now, that is his level of revelation. In my level of revelation, 
If I practice humility in my hiding place with the Lord, I will practice humility out there also. Yeah. Irrespective of who I meet and, and whatever it is that God has said to me regarding the person or not regarding the person yeah. and whatever else. Humility, wow, my God. Humility can be birthed in the place of prayer and does get birthed in the place of prayer. You cannot fake presence. You cannot fake presence. And when you have stayed <clears throat> with God in that place of prayer, in that privacy, when you come to a public setting, you, the, 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 the fragrance of the Lord is on you. Yeah. And an aspect of God's fragrance is humility. You really cannot free, uh, fake the this, this secret place. It's, it's on you. If you are familiar with that place, you can smell it on an individual. Right. You can see it all over them. And they carry the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is never belittling. The heart of the Father is never with the agenda of shaming anybody. So if you carry the heart of the Father because you've been with him, it's like people have experiences of gold dust because they, they had experiences where they went into the throne room of God where everything in there is made of gold. Mm. And so some of the gold rubs off on them and you can literally see it on their faces right or you stay in that atmosphere of the light of god he dwells in unapproachable light yes and you come out of that time of prayer and you're glowing and people can look at you and say whoa you are glowing what's the deal with you some of you have come out of a major program and somebody asks you where have you been something about you you know we call it glory glow right <laughs> Because the, 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 the light of the presence of God begins to radiate on you like it did on Moses' face. Right. It happens in this day and time with us as well. You know, so you really cannot fake that presence. Mm. And it, it's not just limited to the physical manifestation right. as in gold dust or your face glowing. It, it, it also includes your character. There is a change in your character. There is a, a certain level of humility that accompanies that because it's the heart of the Father. There's a certain dimension of love that accom accompanies that. So you, it will be challenging for you to give someone a prophetic word with the agenda of shaming them right. because that's not the heartbeat of the Father. Right. You know, so can, can you hear something that God is saying and communicate it wrongly? Yes. If you have not stayed in the secret place long enough for your character to be worked on, you can very well hear God say something and then your character becomes a hindrance because you can receive pure water flow through a rusty pipe. Right. It will come out brown on the other mm. end. Mm. The water in itself was pure and clean, mm. but because it flowed through a rusty pipe, it right. comes out on the other end brown. So God has to help us as People who are representing him, scripture says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. God has to help us as his oracles, and that's each and every one of us, not a title for any particular man of God. It, is, it refers to each and every one of us. God has to help us as his oracles to communicate the heart of the Father so that we don't receive a word from the Lord, and yet our transmission belittles the person who is supposed to be receiving our transmission shames the person who is supposed to be receiving. Our transmission makes that person feel small. Intimidates well, the person. It's, it's unhealthy and sometimes it comes with so much dishonor. And God has to help you and I to fix that. We don't want to communicate what God is not communicating. You, you know, first of all, if I... I'm given a vehicle to drive. And I get into that vehicle and, and drive, you know, drive it, and it, it, it's a great ride and, and, and so on and so forth. I would just be riding the car because it was given to me. Mm -hmm. If someone else, on the other hand, walks for 30 years, and they are able to save enough to buy that same vehicle. They look at that vehicle as an expression mm. 
of their seed time yes and labor time right yes and so whatever they are doing with it they have that at the back of their mind you see a car they see toil yes they see labor right so the value level will be different the value level will be different mm -hmm. I was talking with, with one of the girls, and, and, and they were saying, oh, I saw this car, I want the car, I want the car. I said, okay, okay, okay. But there are vehicles that are not as costly. Why are you choosing that one? I said, well, walk the numbers out and let me know. I, I want to know why you're choosing that. And I said, well, I'm going for that one because someone is going to pay a chunk of the money. I said, okay, now I see. But you, don't, you, you think that's wonderful because someone is paying, but you don't realize that it omits the value mm -hmm. and the beauty, that beautiful currency called value. It will take it away from the picture. You won't see it on day one. No, you won't see it on day three. Mm -mm. You won't. Mm -hmm. You would see it days later on when something would happen and you realize, oh, it's okay. It wasn't anything. Right? But to someone else, it was a whole lot. It was a whole lot. So the way you handle a soul reveals if you had ever gone out and birthed a soul. Oh, my God. Isn't that the truth? Right? <laughs> That, that, that right there, that right there, if you, if, you, if you raise commotion in a church and split it into 50, we know you never started the church. Mm -mm. We know that. So it is easier to say things because one hasn't worn the shoes. Right. It is easier to say things because one hasn't won the shoes. But when you stay in the presence of God and you begin to see what he is doing in your life and in the life of others, when he gives you a revelation, you'll behave like Peter. Oh, all of this fish you're giving me, I'm not worthy of the mm. fish. And he says, yes, I know you're not worthy. That's why I'm giving you the fish. <laughs> I'm giving you the fish so you can hold it. So that, so that you will not be puffed up because you're holding fish. Right. There are many people who are holding fish. Holding fish in terms of revelational knowledge. Holding fish in terms of, uh, I don't know, a church. Holding fish in terms of, you know, you're holding all of these things. And the difference between you and the other person down the road is just that little thing right there. You know you aren't worthy. And the other person thinks they are worthy. The Bible calls it, when it's mentioning these two gentlemen who are praying, he said, one prayed to himself. Mm -hmm. The other will not as much as lift up his head. Because when you pray to yourself, you, you, you hit your chest. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. this is me. They hold me. I prayed and I fasted and hey, look at what God did. Help us, Jesus. Ah, God, God, help us. God, help us. I remember earlier on today when the Lord came to me, he said, he said, during the prayer time, such and such and such is going to happen. I talked to you about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and God was saying to me, I am not give, I'm not going to give you the things, and I'm not giving you the things for you to say to everyone because at the mouth of two or three, a thing is established. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I mean, that's great. So, so you kind of wonder, like, Father, why, why, why are you coming to tell me this? So this is God giving me insider information. Yeah. Okay. So just so you know, this is what I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to do it with such and such and such and not with you because of such and such and such. It's like God speaking to David and saying, yeah, I know you want to build me a house. Wow. Nobody ever thought about that. You are really a man after my heart. You, 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 you're my friend. Right? Okay. He says that and he says, but you're not going to build me a house because your hands, ooh, there's a lot of blood in your hands. Right? And, and David is leaning in and listening in on what God is saying and concludes, oh, that's actually okay. But I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get everything that is required for the house to be built. 
wow. So child of God, believe me, brokenness, brokenness is that one unique thing okay. that will take your ministry to places that the anointing can get you into. Sometimes we talk about a man's gift will make way for him, but we never consider brokenness to be a gift. Mm. But I can tell you that brokenness is a gift because brokenness makes you know how to talk to people yes. in such a unique way. Brokenness helps you manage people's emotions in a very unique way. You know, where people see faults, you see needs. Oh, that's good. Only brokenness can translate you into that kind of person. Yes. Because believe me, there are many around the world who have faults. I'm talking to you about faults like, this is a way of saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of faults. Oh, but brokenness God. brings you to where you're able to see needs. Yes. You know, the Bible says something about Jesus. It says he was a man of many sorrows. Look at how many lives he touched he because himself. he was acquainted with with grief. You know, acquainted with grief. Acquainted with grief means you you move a step mm -hmm. and grief moves another step. Mm -hmm. So so you guys do left, right, left, right, mm -hmm. left, right. Is it's is, is you and grief. So 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 this is huge, right? This is huge. How many of you have lost loved ones in a stretch? Maybe you mm -hmm. lost your husband or maybe you lost your spouse. You lost a child. Then you lost a sister. Then you lost your this and then you lost your dad. By the time you've lost all of those people, you, you, you now speak differently. Pastor Peter, and in the midst of you losing all of these people, you are praying for other people, family members who are sick, and they're getting healed instantly. Yes. And, 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 and God lets you come into that place, <laughs> and, and, and this is your refiner's fire. Oof. Jesus. After that, your ministry goes whoop. It goes to another level. Listen to me, child of God. There are many of us in the ministry who are being trained by the Lord. By the way, let me, let me say this. I have to say this. It is not God who goes killing people so he can make you better. No. no. It is God saying, well, this and this and this is what is happening. I am going to as it were, milk that cow. Okay? So God is going to take the honey that is found in those places and make of you a choice vessel. Amen. So if you're listening to me even now and you have lost someone recently or lost people over a period of time, listen, you ask, oh Jesus, it is a day of elevation for you, child of God. Please take this, take this. It's a day of elevation for you. It is a day of uplifting. It is a season in which God is sieving the chaff out of you so that he can make of you even a better person. God is reminding you of the value of life because of the life that was taken right by your side. Right by your side. So do not be surprised over the next few days if you, you begin to find out that responsibility is being demanded of you. Mm -hmm. That God is calling you into greater places of, of, of honor, of worship, yes. of praise, right? Of ministering to other people who have not been or who are where you currently are. <laughs> God has a way of taking your story, flipping it around, and releasing it as a message to others. Yeah. Those who came for the shot in, they were really... Oh my God, they were really telling of their stories. Yeah. Yeah. And as they recounted their stories, others were able to see themselves in those stories. Yes. And because of that identification, guess what? It created honor and oil could flow to them because you cannot mm. receive from something you don't honor. You can't receive from something oh you God. don't honor. So God is saying to us, even now, where you have been is a place for the glory to flow. Amen. It's Amen. a place for the glory to flow. It's a place for My the glory God. to flow. Child of God, we have talked about a whole bunch of things tonight. Things to glean from. Mm -hmm. And as you take the time to listen to this again, listen to it from YouTube, uh, listen to it over Facebook. I don't know, something happens with Facebook. You know, they just come and they take out our videos. But you listen to it from, from YouTube. That's the reason why we, we want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel because you will never miss um, um, any of the recordings. You can always go back and just put them on 
you know, on a playlist and they'll keep on playing. You know, but God is teaching us tonight. A vessel does not become a vessel of, of honor until it's broken against the ground. Child of God, have you been smashed to the floor by an occurrence? <sighs> have you been some kind of way rendered useless, I might say, by the things that have happened around you? Mm -hmm. I have news for you. God has at one time used a donkey. At another time, he used a shepherd's staff. Mm -hmm. At another time still, he used a dove. Mm -hmm. And we can go on and on. God uses animate as well as inanimate That's things. Right. God will use you. Amen. And while that is true, child of God, I need for you to understand you, this. Jesus. God's ultimate relationship with you is not how he uses you, but how he fellowships with you. That's right. And so even tonight, we want to throw an invitation out there in case you have looked at yourself and seen that your relationship with the Lord is wobbly. That it is not giving you a sense of a solid foundation upon the solid rock himself, Christ Jesus. This will be a great time for you to rededicate your life to the yes. Lord. There is nothing as powerful as our certainty in the Lord. Knowing very well that he who keeps Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Knowing very well that when we call upon his name, he is going to show up. Knowing very well that his death on the cross was with us in mind. I'm talking about that personal, personal, personal relationship with the Lord. Child of God, personal relationship with the Lord. I'm not talking to you about church attendance. I'm not talking to you about when next you put your Bible under your pillow. No, I'm talking to you about relating with a God who makes his life relevant with yours. If that's you tonight. I want to invite you to pray with me. And I want you to take note that I wasn't asserting the fact that you may not have given your life to Jesus. I said, if you look at yourself and you don't have the certainty that your relationship with the Lord is on a solid foundation that cannot be shaken, you need to pray with me right about now. That could mean you've been in church for 30 years, but you don't have that assurance. You need to pray with me right now. It could be that you're a bishop. It doesn't matter what the title is. Choir member, choir leader, it doesn't matter. Usher in church, it doesn't matter. Because the truth is this. If there is no assurance to your salvation, there probably isn't any salvation. There is nothing wrong in being certain. Because you really want to know where you stand. It is better to be sure that you're going to make it into heaven. Number one. Number two. And also be sure that God is standing with you on earth. I am not talking about a Roderick that says God is not done with me yet. He's still working on me. That's not what I'm talking to you about. I'm talking to you about an assurance that God has your name written down in the book of life. And if that's where you are tonight, where there isn't an assurance, I want to invite you to pray with me tonight. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I yield to you. I yield to you. Since you died on the cross for me, since you died on the cross for me, I align myself with what you did on the cross. I align myself with what you did on the I cross. I appreciate you, Lord. I appreciate you, Lord. For taking my place on the cross. For taking my place on the cross. And I ask, oh God. And I ask, oh God. That you will come and dwell within me. That you will come and dwell within me. And come with you. And come with you. The joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. Create within me, O oh God. Create within me, O oh God. A clean heart. A clean heart. A new one, actually. A new one, actually. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. For setting me free. For setting me free. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. For removing me out of darkness. For removing me out of darkness. And bringing me into the light. And bringing me into the light. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you, the assurance of the Lord is with you right now. 
You have been forgiven. You're starting on a clean slate. And guess what, child of God? The word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, if anyone be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is now a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are now new. And the word of God says everything is now new as a result of the reconciliation that has happened between us and God. Made possible by the man Christ Jesus. Child of God, he who knew no sin was made sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So here we stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And so the word of God admonishes us by saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Wherever you are tonight, child of God, I just want you to make that declaration with me. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And I am redeemed of the Lord. And I am redeemed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. It is a brand amen. new day and your life will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good like that in jesus name Amen. hallelujah 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 Thank well you. praise the lord if you join us if you join us guess what tonight has been a special night you join the kange household of faith where we bring to you the, the word, word of, of restoration, restoration in, in the spirit, spirit of, of faith. faith that's the reason why we closed out the way we just did calling you into a place of not just repentance, but of actually stepping into the benefits Amen. of the salvation of God. Amen. So for those of you who are interested in joining us for prayer time later on at midnight, so that's about two hours two from now. Two hours from now. 11, uh, actually one hour, 58 50. minutes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> one hour, 58 minutes, we are going to be praying and God is going to help us through that prayer time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, um, Pastor Dora Ruth Chinyere Mokubo. Praise Mokuba. the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. You're fired up indeed. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Yes, Mr. Bernard Osai Kani, you are the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. 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 Wow, it is so good to have every one of you join us tonight. It was a beautiful yeah, session. There was, there was a, a whole lot. There was a whole lot to have conversations around, and yes. we are glad we're able to have those conversations. Hey, Patrice, God bless you. Um, hey, Minister Nana, that's right, I am, I am redeemed. Amen. Yes. Child of God, never get tired declaring your redemption in the Lord, okay? Keep, keep declaring it. Earlier on today... In our prayer time at 6 this morning. Now, I don't typically come up for prayer time. I don't typically lead. You don't typically I don't lead. typically lead. But for the past few days, I've been in a place of leading. Because I just wanted people to, to spend time praying with me. Again, with me. So when, when people come on, I said, you know, you didn't come on the prayer line so I can pray for you. No. If that's why you came, get up. <laughs> get up right now. Hallelujah. Hey, Mr. Diamond. God bless you. God Good bless to have you, you sir. On. You and I need to talk. That's the second time he's saying this. We need to have a conversation. Diamond Ebbs as well. <laughs> Listen to your mom right now. Or all your names. <laughs> anyway, so um, we need to have a conversation. Try to reach out to me, Telegram, whatever. Just reach out to me. Um, when, when, when I see your call, I'm going, to, I'm going to pick it up. But we were talking about, I was talking about how I don't typically lead on prayer line. Mm -hmm. We have people... Who, you know, who go ahead and, and lead. And that's because it's a training ground and, yes. and so on and so forth. And so, you know, being in the prayer time this morning, the, the previous days uh, at one o'clock today where we prayed until five mm -hmm. and later on tonight in, uh, <laughs> he says that right, that's right, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Damn on you, said. <laughs> so um, I, I, we prayed, you know, from one till five mm -hmm. and um, we are still going to be praying 
in in one hour 55 minutes i love that countdown <laughs> we are going to be praying the countdown is, is happening <laughs> powerful we are going to spend time before the lord please 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 join us for prayer time if you can the information will be put up it is going to be over zoom and god is going to help us tremendously I don't know how long we will be praying, but we will be praying, okay? We will be praying. Pray Jesus, we pray. Jesus had a way of showing people by talking and showing them by acting it out. Yes. yes. And so we are using this opportunity to ret of this opportunity of retreating upwards to really be in that place of prayer with you. Without which, you know, some of you will just stay hungry and um, not having fasted effectively. Prayer is part of fasting. Okay, prayer is part of fasting. It is starvation if there is no fasting and there is right. no word. And, it's and, and just studying starvation. the word of God is, is part of it. It's yeah. part of it. Um, thank you very much, sir. Love <laughs> you, sir. Yeah. Amen. So that's the number to text. Send a text to okay, 301 Okay, so you can send a text to that number and... Um, you will receive a Zoom link. Yeah, and I believe that that number is also connected to Telegram. I'm, um, I think so. So in case you have Telegram, maybe maybe you're out of the country or something like that. Um, but I think the number could also be connected to WhatsApp. I don't know, but j let's just try to. I'm going to find out right now from the admin team. Because I know not all of you can text the U.S. number. Um, right. I must be cognizant of the fact that. Um, some of you are actually out of the United States. Okay, so. you can send a message via Facebook inbox. Perfect. So, so you just go to Reaching the Nations Ministries International and you will be able to send a message through Messenger, Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger, and that, that information will be sent over to you as well in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Also, use, use the Messenger platform to send messages directly our team is very good at responding to those messages, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's always a blessing. Prayer requests, whatever it is, the need for counseling, and so on and so forth, we, we step in there as, as much as we can. Um, I know some people think when they text the ministry, they just get us directly. Um, I like your confidence, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that, um, and, and that's because we, 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 are, we are people who are very engaged, and uh, please understand there's more than just you, okay? Um, there are many other people like you. I, and so we want to be relevant with everyone. And um, we are mindful of that. We are mindful of that. Hallelujah. That said, we are going to pass you guys over to the table of exchange. And, and by that, we mean time for offerings, okay? Amen. God time bless you all. God bless oh, you. Mr. Val, God bless you. I missed you over the weekend. I was so looking forward to hugging you. Anyway, <laughs> bye. Bye, uh, everybody. Yeah. Shalom. God oh, bless you. <laughs> bye, Pastor Edmond. God bless you. You're welcome. So have a blessed rest of your day, all of you. And uh, shalom, shalom. May the Lord keep you. Amen. May the Lord's countenance be brightened over you. Amen. May the Lord sing over you. May the Lord cause you to come into a place of beauty in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord cause you to have favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen, amen. and amen and amen. See you all very soon. Over to the <laughs> table of exchange. She's still awake. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Today, I think I'm going to <laughs> follow Pastor Peter's footsteps and say, Child of God.